button and subscribe this channel and press the bell icon to get notification of our new video hello everyone welcome to mbcs.com so in this video we are going to discuss about uh, diabetes mellitus and first of all i would like to differentiate between type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus and then we will discuss about uh, the diagnosis part and the follow up part and about the management we will discuss in our next video and also we will discuss uh, complications of diabetes mellitus in our later videos now uh, let's come to the difference between type 1 and type 2 diabetes mellitus so the type 1 diabetes mellitus is autoimmune condition what does it means it depends on hla dq a dr3 and dr4 so there are beta cells in the pancreas so because of this autoimmune reaction there is inflammation in the beta cells of pancreas which causes fibrosis and then scarring in the pancreas therefore there is no insulin release from the pancreas there is no insulin release from the pancreas now coming to the type 2 it is insulin resistant state that means the receptors for the insulin are not working properly so that's why receptors are not working properly therefore there is increase insulin in the body so this is also known as insulin resistant state now uh because of this there is no insulin production this is known as insulin dependent state this is insulin dependent state okay now the type 1 diabetes mellitus is more common in children this is more common in adults now talking about the outcome uh, the outcome of type 1 diabetes mellitus is worse now coming to uh the presentation part there are less presentation in type 1 and more presentation in type 2 because of vascular involvement vascular disease the family history is not relevant in this family history is present in 100% of cases now coming to the diagnosis part now how to diagnose the diabetes mellitus in a patient so you have to do fasting blood sugars so the fasting blood sugars should be more than 126 mg percent on on two occasions or more than 200 mg percent at any time so you can diagnose the diabetes mellitus either you can do the fasting blood glucose level or you can either do hba1c if you find the hba1c more than 6.5 then this is diagnostic for diabetes mellitus and and this tells about last 3 months average of sugar levels okay now coming to the clinical features the main clinical features first one is polyuria second is polydipsia third one polyphagia fourth is weight loss fifth one is uh, recurrent infections because of uh, immunocompromised state infections sixth one is postperineal blurring of vision blurring of vision 
so these are the clinical features now coming to the follow up part how to follow up the patient so you have to first perform HbA1c test which should more than 6.5% second is fasting glucose levels third one is postperineal glucose levels the normal fasting levels should be less than 100 and postperineal should be less than 140 this is 2 hours after breakfast now the fourth one is you have to do lipid profile because in the diabetic state you have increased triglyceride and decreased HDL fifth one you have to also do urine examination and you have to look for ketone proteins and sugar in the urine so this is about the follow-up and one more thing that uh, the screening part if a patient came to you and uh, he is giving family history of diabetes mellitus and uh, his age is more than more than 45 years then you have to perform diabetes mellitus screening every 3 yearly so this is about the screening part in the next video we will discuss about the treatment and in the next to next video we will discuss about the complications of diabetes mellitus so please subscribe the channel and also like this video and share this video with your friends thank you